Hi, this is the Mosomic MEMS microphone guide. In this episode and the next one, I'll talk about uh, the structure, functionality and performance of MEMS microphones. In this episode, I'll concentrate on the package and the MEMS sensor. Stay tuned! This series is sponsored by Infineon Technologies. The key building blocks of a MEMS microphone are the package, the acoustic sensor, the MEMS, and the ASIC. Let's start with the package. It serves several functions. First of all, it houses the acoustic sensor and the MEMS. It's an acoustic enclosure that provides the acoustic sensor a proper working environment. Second, it provides mechanical and environmental protection for the MEMS sensor and the ASIC that are relatively fragile semiconductor components. It protects them from handling, abuse, contamination and so on. Especially the MEMS needs protection from things such as environmental factors, moisture, dust and liquids, as well as mechanical abuse, such as touching or poking. Semiconductors are also sensitive to light, from which the package also protects them. Sometimes additional protection, such as the so-called glob top on top of the ASIC, may be needed. The package also provides the MEMS chip additional rigidity against mechanical deformations that could affect the functionality of the sensor when the device the microphone is in is handled or abused. Third, the package provides electromagnetic and electrical protection for the sensor and the ASIC against RF interference, ESD and so on. Key package properties that enable this are, for example, a Faraday cage and proper grounding. The package also provides the microphone with electrical connections. A connection between the sensor and the ASIC, as well as from the ASIC to the outside world. The sound port on a MEMS microphone is the opening through which sound can enter the microphone and thereby reach the sensor. Microphones can be divided into two types based on the location of the sound port, bottom port and top port. Like the name implies, the sound port of a bottom port component is at the bottom of the microphone, typically running through the substrate plate of the package. The microphone is acoustically connected to the outside world by making a hole in the device circuit board. The hole in the board must naturally coincide with the port on the bottom of the microphone. The sound channel in the device mechanics is sealed against the device circuit board around the hole on the opposite side of the board from the microphone. The port of a top port component is on the top of the component, in the part often referred to as lid. The sound channel in the device mechanics is sealed against the top of the microphone around the sound port. The sound port can, in principle, also be on the side of the package. In some cases, this would be an advantageous design, but in practice, either the microphone or its ceiling tend to become too complicated. Typically, the base of a MEMS microphone is a plate, often called the substrate. The substrate is typically a small and thin circuit board made out of FR4 material on which the MEMS and the ASIC are mounted. In addition to the substrate board, there is either a top-shaped metal lid that also forms the side walls of the package, or a lid and a separate piece that forms the walls. The latter option is often used in top port packages, in which the substrate, walls and lid are formed out of circuit board material, for example FR4. The MEMS and the ASIC are typically mounted on the base plate, the substrate or on the bottom of the lid. The mounting is typically done with an adhesive or by soldering bond pads on the chip and on the substrate board together. The electrical connection between the sensor and the ASIC can be done with bond wires or circuit board connections traced into the substrate board. The electrical connection from the ASIC to the outside world is typically done with circuit board connections in the substrate board that take the signals to contact pads at the bottom of the component. 
The signals may be taken from the top of the ASIC onto the top of the substrate board with bond wires. The package affects many important MEMS microphone performance parameters, such as frequency response, sensitivity, SNR, phase performance, power supply disturbance immunity and RF immunity. The package has a big impact also on the reliability of the microphone. I'll talk more about this later. A typical size for a MEMS microphone package is 4 by 3 mm or smaller. The bottom port package is the most common type of MEMS microphone package, because it's simple and easy to manufacture and thereby inexpensive, and it also enables achieving a high performance. The MEMS and the ASIC are mounted on the bottom substrate of the package, and the top-shaped lid covers them. The structure is acoustically favorable, because with this design it's typically easy to have a small front volume, which is typically only the small space within the, the acoustic sensor, and a large back volume, typically the whole volume under the metal lid except for the MEMS and the ASIC chips. Another common package type is the top port package. In principle it can be made simply by blocking the sound port of a bottom port component and making a hole in the metal lid. The result is a so-called traditional top port package. Now the front and back volumes are reversed, making this structure acoustically poor. The front volume of the microphone is all the air under the lid except for the space taken by the MEMS and the ASIC chips. The back volume is the small volume of air behind the membrane inside the MEMS chip. In other words, the front volume is large and the back volume is small. As we learned in episode 3, this is an unfavorable acoustic structure for a MEMS microphone. It's difficult to achieve a high SNR and good frequency response with this type of package. A more sophisticated way to make a top port microphone is to make the lid, the walls and the substrate from circuit board material and mount the MEMS and the ASIC chips on the lid. This way the front volume is small and the back volume is big, just like in a bottom port microphone, making also this an acoustically favorable structure that enables a high SNR and a good frequency response. This package type has also other benefits as compared to the metal lid type top port component. It enables similar performance from bottom port and top port microphones. The immunity against compromised sound porting in the device mechanics is improved. This allows mixing different types of components in one device without compromising microphone uniformity. Another benefit is that the package is straight angled also on the top surface. This makes the ceiling surface on top of the component bigger than that of a metal lit top port component that has rounded corners. This can be a very important factor in top port microphones. I'll talk more about this in a later episode, where I talk about the acoustic and mechanical implementation of microphones into devices. If the MEMS and the ASIC of a MEMS microphone are mounted on the lid, then there must be some way to route the signals from the ASIC down to the substrate where the contact pads are for the microphone. In many cases, and with many packaging technologies, this could be challenging. However, making the microphone, including the lid and the walls, out of circuit board material provides a solution. The connections can be made as circuit board traces and wires from the lid to the substrate in the walls. A MEMS microphone needs an acoustically sealed sound channel from the top of the microphone, or the bottom, up to the surface of the device. The acoustical ceiling between the bottom port microphone and the device circuit board through which the sound port runs is typically done with a soldered ceiling ring. There are contact pad rings on both the microphone and on the circuit board, and these rings are soldered together to form an acoustic seal between the two. In addition to providing an acoustic seal, the ceiling ring also protects the microphone sound port and the MEMS sensor from the outgassing from the microphone solder joints during reflow in device manufacturing. Another benefit of the seal ring is that if it's grounded like it should be, it provides electrostatic discharges, a grounding point, thus improving the reliability of the system. 
In many microphones, there's a ground ring that runs at the perimeter of the bottom of the component, completing a Faraday cage structure between the microphone and the device circuit board. In principle, this ring could also be used as an acoustic seal. However, an unwelcome consequence would be that the thin but relatively wide space between the microphone and the circuit board would become part of the acoustic channel. This would likely cause a Helmholtz resonance, so it's not a good acoustic solution. I talked about Helmholtz resonance and its effect on microphone frequency response in more detail in episode 2. If there's no ceiling ring or ground ring at the bottom of the microphone, the sound channel would not be sealed at all. This would lead to an increased risk of problems such as noise and echo in the device. I'll talk more about acoustic sealing in episode 15. One of the key tasks of a MEMS microphone package is to protect the ASIC and the MEMS and the electrical connections in the package from electromagnetic interference. There's one electrical phenomenon that is a great help against electromagnetic interference, the Faraday cage. A Faraday cage is a grounded box or cage made out of conductive material, usually metal. The MEMS microphone package can be built to be a Faraday cage. The key phenomenon related to the cage is that electric fields get cancelled inside it. This means that the electric fields outside the microphone, such as radiated radio frequency waves, are blocked by the cage and thereby the sensitive electrical systems inside the microphone are protected from interference. A good Faraday cage also prevents emissions of signals that might originate in the microphone itself. The materials that form the cage must be conductive enough. In other words, the resistance within the cage structure must be low. This applies to resistance to both DC and AC currents. A good rule of thumb is that the DC resistance within the cage should not be more than 1 ohm. In a bottom port MEMS microphone package that consists of a substrate and a metal lid on top of it, the Faraday cage consists of the metal lid and a ground plane within the substrate. In a package in which the substrate, walls and lid are made out of circuit board material, the bottom and top of the cage are ground layers in the substrate and the lid. Vertical copper wires in the side walls of the package form the walls of the Faraday cage. In MEMS packages that have a lid made out of metal, the exact material of the lid can also play a role in how well it works as a part of the Faraday cage. For example, brass is 28% as conductive as copper, whereas the conductivity of steel is only 3 to 15% of the conductivity of copper. Therefore, a brass lid is known to enable a better microphone RF immunity than a steel one. The conductivity of a metal lid can be improved with an appropriate metal plating. For example, gold plating on a brass lid improves the effective conductivity of the lid. In a MEMS microphone package, the different parts of the package, such as walls, lid and substrate plate, may be attached to each other with a conductive adhesive, a conductive epoxy. The conductivity of the adhesive must be high enough to let both DC currents as well as high frequency AC currents pass easily. Soldering the lid in its place is typically a more effective way than glue to ensure good RF interference rejection. If the cage structure is a conductive mesh, not a solid box, the holes in the cage walls must be small enough so that even very high frequency RF waves cannot get in. Typically, in a MEMS microphone, openings with a maximum dimension of less than 1 mm are OK. In MEMS microphone packages made out of circuit board material, FR4, the cage structure is, at least partly, a mesh. Another key design factor in a Faraday cage is grounding. Overall, grounding is maybe the most important factor in high RF immunity of a microphone and a microphone system. All parts of the cage must be grounded well in order to make the cage effective. The portion of the Faraday cage in the substrate board is typically a ground plane that covers as much as possible of the area of the component. 
The same goes for the leads in packages made out of circuit board material. The Faraday cage can be extended to the device circuit board. If there is a grounded soldering at the perimeter of the bottom of the microphone package, it should be soldered and grounded against a similar ring in the device circuit board. The traces running into and out of the microphone can be shielded inside the device circuit board by having ground planes on both sides of the signals and rows of vias connecting those planes to each other. The most important part of the microphone is naturally the acoustic sensor, the MEMS. It's the electroacoustic transducer that enables converting sound into an electrical output signal. MEMS stands for Microelectromechanical System. This means that the sound sensor has been manufactured out of semiconductor materials in a semiconductor manufacturing process. The key difference between a MEMS chip and other semiconductor devices is that there are moving mechanical structures in a MEMS. In the case of a capacitive microphone element, the moving part that reacts to sound is a membrane that is able to oscillate in relation to an adjacent backplate. The key function of the MEMS sensor are to receive sound and to convert the mechanical vibration into electricity. The conversion is done with the help of the microphone ASIC. The MEMS also provides the needed electrical connections to enable outputting a signal from the sensor. The mechanical part of the MEMS sensor is the vibrating element that is excited by acoustic pressure oscillations. At the same time as being a sound receiving member, the vibrating element also acts as an electrical component in an electrical circuit. In the case of a capacitive microphone, the acoustic sensor is an electrical capacitance, the capacitance of which oscillates when sound makes it vibrate. In the case of a piezoelectric microphone, the sensor is a piezoelectric element that is capable of inducing a voltage in its output when the element is deformed or compressed. The oscillating sensor element is often suspended in a bulk silicon material that remains in place after the MEMS sensor has been manufactured by processing one or more pieces of semiconductor into a microelectromechanical system. The bulk silicon gives the MEMS chip rigidity so that it cannot easily be deformed. The properties and performance of a capacitive sensor element depend on many factors. As we learned in episode 3, the sensitivity and uh, performance of a capacitive sensor membrane depend on many things. The perforations in the backplate, the gap between the membrane and the backplate, the size of the back volume, the volume of air behind the membrane inside the microphone package, and the properties of the membrane. A bigger membrane can receive more sound energy and thereby its sensitivity is higher. A bigger membrane backplate pair improves sensitivity also by making the capacitance between the membrane and the backplate bigger. The capacitance depends also on the distance from the membrane to the backplate, backplate perforation hole size and pitch, backplate thickness, as well as the number of plates that form the capacitor. In other words, is there only one membrane and one backplate, or is it a sandwich structure? Another effect of a bigger membrane is that the mass of the membrane is typically higher, possibly affecting the ability of the membrane to accurately follow very high sound frequencies or large signal dynamics. Naturally, also the thickness of the membrane affects its mass. Also high membrane compliance improves sensitivity. Lastly, also the suspension style of the membrane, rigid or spring-mounted, affects how compliant it is and what its effective mass and area are. Also the acoustic self-noise of the sensor depends on many factors. The height of the membrane backplate gap, the sizes of the perforations in the backplate, the distance from one perforation to the next one, and the length of the perforations, in practice the thickness of the backplate. The shorter and wider all the air passages are, the smaller their acoustic resistances are, and the less they add noise to the sound signals that travel through them. Many of the dimensions in an acoustic sensor are compromises, 
for example between sensitivity and noise. It's also important to acknowledge that the mechanical robustness of the micromechanical structures must not be compromised by choosing the sensor dimensions poorly. The properties of the MEM sensor affect many key parameters of the microphone. Sensitivity, self-noise, distortion, frequency response, meaning low-frequency roll-off frequency and high-frequency resonances, phase characteristics and reliability, meaning abuse immunity and environmental immunity. Okay, that's it for this episode. In episode 12 I'll continue talking about the basics of MEMS microphones. In that one I'll talk about the ASIC and the functionality of a MEMS microphone. I hope I'll see you around. Cheers! If you have any questions or comments, write them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. You can also contact me online or on social media. If you like what you saw here, give a like for the video and subscribe to the Mosomic channel. That way you help me reach more people and thereby create more content. If you need more in-depth microphone training than what you saw here, contact me and we can arrange it. The training can be adapted to suit any interests and skill levels and the customer can choose the location and duration of the course. Mosomic provides also consultation services in all things related to MEMS microphones. If you're a microphone buyer, I can help you select the right components for your product and manage your microphone suppliers. I can also assist in implementing the microphones into your device. For microphone manufacturers, I provide microphone marketing, product definition, product management and development management services. I can also help you create all kinds of MEMS microphone documentation, 